The Great Moon Hoax, also known as the Great Moon Hoax of 1835, was a series of six articles published in The Sun, a New York newspaper, beginning on August 25, 1835, about the supposed discovery of life and even civilization on the moon. The discoveries were falsely attributed to Sir John Herschel, one of the best-known astronomers of that time. The story was advertised on August 21, 1835, as an upcoming feature allegedly reprinted from the Edinburgh Courant. The first in a series of six was published four days later on August 25. The headline read, The articles described animals on the moon, including bison, goats, unicorns, bipedal tail, less beavers and bat-like winged humanoids, Vespertilio, Homo, who built temples. There were trees, oceans, and beaches. These discoveries were supposedly made with an immense telescope of an entirely new principle. Despotilio, homo can be translated from Latin as man, bat, batman, or man, bats. A reprinted edition of 1836 added a second type named the Vespertilions or the Batmen. The author of the narrative was ostensibly Dr. Andrew Brandt, the traveling companion and amanuensis of Sir John Herschel, but Grant was fictitious. Eventually, the authors announced that the observations had been terminated by the destruction of the telescope by means of the sun causing the lens to act as a burning glass, setting fire to the observatory. Authorship of the article has been attributed to Richard Adams Locke, 1800-1871, a reporter who, in August 1835, was working for the sun. Locke publicly admitted to being the author in 1840 in a letter to the weekly paper New World. Still, rumors persisted that others were involved. Two other men had been noted in connection with the hoax. Jean Nicolas Nicolette, a French astronomer traveling in America at the time, though he was in Mississippi, not New York, when the moon hoax issues appeared, and Louis Gaylord Clark, editor of the Knickerbocker, a literary magazine. However, there is no good evidence to indicate that anyone but Locke was the author of the hoax. Assuming that Richard A. Locke was the author, his intentions were probably first to create a sensational story which would increase sales of the sun and second to ridicule some of the more extravagant astronomical theories that had recently been published. For instance, in 1824, Franz von Paula Gruthuisen, professor of astronomy at Munich University, had published a paper titled Discovery of Many Distinct Traces of Lunar Inhabitants, especially of one of their colossal buildings. Gruthuisen claimed to have observed various shades of color on the lunar surface, which he correlated with climate and vegetation zones. He also observed lines and geometrical shapes, which he felt indicated the existence of walls, roads, fortifications, and cities. However, a more direct object of Locke's satire was Reverend Thomas Dick, who was known as the Christian philosopher after the title of his first book. Dick had computed that the solar system contained 21,891,974,458,000 point time trillion. In fact, the moon alone, by his count, would contain 4,200,000,000 inhabitants. His writings were enormously popular in the United States. Intellectual Ralph Waldo Emerson was one of his fans. According to legend, the sun's circulation increased dramatically because of the hoax and remained permanently greater than before, thereby establishing the sun as a successful paper. However, the degree to which the hoax increased the paper's circulation has certainly been exaggerated in popular accounts of the event. It was not discovered to be a hoax for several weeks after its publication, and even then, the newspaper did not issue a retraction. Herschel was initially amused by the hoax, noting that his own real observations could never be as exciting. He later became annoyed when he had to answer questions from people who believed the hoax was serious. Edgar Allan Poe claimed the story was a plagiarism of his earlier work, The Unparalleled Adventure of One Hand's Fowl. His editor at the time was Richard Adams Locke. He later published the balloon hoax in the same newspaper. Poe had published his own moon hoax in late June 1835, two months before the similar Locke moon hoax 
in the Southern Literary Messenger, entitled Hans Feol, a tale later republished as the unparalleled adventure of one Hans Feol. The story was reprinted in the New York transcript on September 2, 5, 1835, under the headline Lunar Discoveries, Extraordinary Aerial Voyage by Baron Hans Feol. Poe described a voyage to the moon in a balloon in which Feol lives for five years on the moon with Lunarians and sends back a Lunarian to Earth. The Poe moon hoax was less successful because of the satiric and comical tone of the account. Locke was able to upstage Poe and to steal his thunder. In 1846, Poe would write a biographical sketch of Lockie as part of his series, The Literati of New York City, which appeared in Godey's Lady's Book. Nate DeMeo's historical podcast, The Memory Palace, dedicated a 2010 episode to the great moon hoax entitled The Moon in the Sun. The hoax inspired a three-part musical by composer Matt Dahan as part of his musical radio series, pulp musical, Richard Adams Locke and the Great Moon Hoaxer. Fictionalized in Chapter 14 of Felix J. Palmer's 2012 novel, The Map of the Sky,